So here is our agenda. So first I will start with some key facts and figures as to why addressing financial wellbeing is so important for everyone, so individually and employees. I will touch on the eye-watering levels of inflation and increased living costs and the impact this is having on our hard-earned income and savings. And then financial well-being really starts with assessing how financially secure you are and having some honest conversations with yourself before building out. Has anyone else lost sound there? Yeah, Kirsty. Yeah. Financial well-being plans relevant yeah, to Brian Dolphin help you, your family. So firstly, why is financial well-being? I can hear you. you can oh no, my internet connection is not good. <laughs> Carry you, on, Kirsty. You there? You're back, can you're you back just, on. Can you stop me, Paul? Yeah, you're back on. Quiet? You're okay. back on. Okay, right. Just keep your eye on me. I'll, I'll wave. <laughs> oh, but I have. Oh, just, just, just. Let me just get to you. Right. Okay, I've got you, Paul. Right. So, why is financial well-being so important? Well, there's three bits of research I'm going to comment on. So. Back in 2017, Martin Lewis, who is a great source of information on his Money Savings Expert website, um, he's also got um, an institute called the Money and Mental Health Policy Institute. And back in 2007, he surveyed a number of employees and found that one in five employees report that they're just about managing financially. Then we did some work with The Lawyer magazine and found that 94% of that population surveyed, so they were all legal professionals, um, found that their finances caused them some degree of stress. And 65% of, of the same group, they're not saving enough for long-term plans. So they're reacting to immediate things like um, saving for a deposit or a wedding or starting a family and not paying attention to how they might manage in their retirement. And that was research from 2020. Then in 2018, Center for Economics and Business Research found that 41% of their group a concern that the money that they, they will have or will save will not last their lifetime. And the same group, 31%, felt that the finances control of their life. So the purpose of our sessions are to help you um, take charge of your finances so that they do not control your life and you've got time to enjoy the other things that you like doing. So in case you didn't know, Bro Dolphin has nothing to do with bathrooms or dolphins. We manage the investments of clients throughout the country and Birmingham is one of our largest offices. On the right-hand side is the financial wellbeing team that are based in Birmingham. Okay, so moving on to inflation now. What is it? Well, it, very simply, it's increase in costs of goods and services that we buy from day to day. It means our money lasts less than it did previously. Uh, I like this slide because it puts it very simply. It shows that back in 30 years ago, in 92, 20 pounds at the supermarket would provide you with a fully stocked shopping trolley. Then 15 years ago in 2007, you'd have half a trolley of your favorite things. And this year, now you'd only have an own labeled dishwashing liquid, a couple of bananas and apples and bread and something I don't recognize. So we all have learned very recently how much of our food comes from Ukraine and Russia and understand how that increases our shopping bills. But there were other things at play before Russia invaded Ukraine in February, and that was Brexit, of course, COVID, and there's national insurance changes too. So what does that mean? Well, as well as our income being eroded from inflation, so too are our hard earned savings. So we can see in this chart, if we put £100 into a cash account, either straightforward savings account or ISA, back in January 2012, at the start of this year, that would be worth £86 or £78 due to inflation. If you put that £100 into the FTSE All Share, which will turn index, FTSE All Share is all of the UK companies, big, small and ugly. Total return is reinvesting your dividends. So we can see that the FTSE All Share option would have been a more bumpy ride, but it's very clearly an upward trajectory. Whereas cash is a much smoother, more gradual decline. Of course, I must point out that past performance is not a guide to future performance, but it's information that we have. So now we're going to look at what is important in considering in our financial security. 
So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is a US agency and it defines financial well-being as having four key elements. So firstly, control of your day-to-day -day spending. So do you know how much you spend from month to month and where you might be able to cut back, perhaps takeaways? Um, and number two, your capacity to absorb financial shock. So how would you manage if your salary wasn't there or someone in your household was not providing an income? Some of us may have had experience of this during the pandemic. Number three, are you on track to meet your financial goals? I mean, firstly, do you have financial goals? Do you know what these are? Do you know how well you are, how close you are to getting, to getting there? And fourthly, the freedom to have to make choices that you would like to enjoy your life. Um, so now and in retirement, so we spend a long time working and want to be able to enjoy our retirement too. Now we're going on to look at how we would build a financial wellbeing plan. So there are eight key steps here. So firstly, build a timeline and remember that certain parts of our life have different focuses. So certainly I remember when I first started working, I was simply trying to pay my bills and I used a lot of credit cards and maneuvering to do so. And then we move into accumulating and building up our assets so that the final stages are that we can use those assets to um, by the lifestyle that we would like in, in retirement. Number two is know your numbers. So how much do you spend each month and, and how much do you take in each month? And what is your credit score? There's an app called ClearScore that alerts you perhaps when you have put a lot in your credit cards, you pay for a holiday, for example, like I have done recently. Do you know how much debt you have? Do you know what your net worth is? Thirdly, make the plan. So there's lots of tools that you can use and we have the perfect one that I will talk about in a minute um, to help you better understand your goals and how to get there. And fourthly, pay down expensive debts. Um, the worst offence of these are store cards and credit cards. They have very high interest rates, so please look at those first. And then fifthly, measure and track your spending. So you can use various tools um, that Martin Lewis's website might have, um, even Lots of our bank accounts have various tools that we can use, or you can use my favorite old fashioned Excel. And setting a budget, make sure that you don't make it too demanding that you get to enjoy, enjoy life and, and your hard earned income. Number seven is, is my favorite really. So create a set savings habit and set up direct debits to go into savings accounts straight after payday and start small if you need to. And think about maybe adding more into your pension. It's a very tax effective way of saving, um, but it's a long-term way of saving. And number eight, create a six month emergency reserve. So an amount equivalent to six months of outgoings for you and your household. It's life's a roller coaster. We know that um, for the last couple of years, we know things go wrong, boilers break, we reverse into something with the car, um, pandemics happen. So we need to make sure that our household can survive for six months if something happens, something goes wrong. So once you have that six months reserve, you must, you have to be prepared to accept inflation on that. But anything over and above that, you should give thought to investing that so that you can help um, fight off inflation to a certain degree. So you must remember that um, if you are going to invest, you really want to have these funds invested for five or more years. You must be prepared for stock market volatility. And um, this is a chart that I, I used before. So you can, again, you can very clearly say, see the, the pros and cons of investing, but we believe that provided you have good cash reserves for the emergencies that um, most people can afford um, to take on some risk with any excess funds. Another question that um, I and my colleagues in the polls will get to is, when is the best time to invest? Well, there's a saying, in, saying that we use a lot, which is time in the market, not timing the market. It's very, very hard to um, come out at the top and go in at the bottom. There's various bits of research that will show you that missing the best 30 days can be very costly for you. So if you look at this chart, we can see back in February, 20, February and March, 2020, we had a very, very steep fall, but also a pretty, quick and steep recovery. And myself and the polls don't get an announcement um, where the markets are going to recover. So if you, um, you know, if you hadn't got back in in time, you, you could 
you really damage your your um potential return so bear that bear that in mind and the two the two main messages here firstly um the top left hand chart which is quite small the point there is um the importance of starting early and in context to how long you're going to be retired for um against how long you can save into your your pension pots and of course um the sooner you start you can make smaller contributions whereas if you leave, leave it to the last few years then you really have to put more into your pension um, that might be comfortable also um, if you're building up a cash reserve um, an ISA a cash reserve might, might be a good place to to have it but thereafter you get most use out of the ISA wrapper features by using a stocks and shares ISA you have income tax allowance, you're using the income tax and the capital gains tax benefits. Um, and so maybe you can put more into your pension. Again, talk about this quite a lot. It's a really uh, tax effective way of saving. And then on the right hand side, this is very important. Um, it's the importance of reinvesting your dividends if you can afford to do so. So if we had put a thousand pounds in January 92, again to fit the old share um index if we had taken the income out we can see that that thousand pounds would be worth at the beginning of this year three five one six but if we had left the dividends to be reinvested then we look at the light blue line and that one thousand pounds will be nearer ten thousand pounds at the beginning of the, this year so if you don't need the income from your investments it makes very good sense to keep these reinvested um, particularly if that's in a tax wrapper and a nicer so you can grow your pots to the point that you may need to use it, in which case you have a bigger pot to draw income from. So there are lots of ways um, that we at Brindoff can help you, your friends, family, contacts, and employees control their finances and financial well-being. So usually in this in this session, um, one of my colleagues really demonstrates this tool, the financial well-being tool, and um, this is, is available to you to have a look at and I highly recommend having a look at it and I looked at it for my own pensions and it certainly focused my mind and made me put more into it so if you have a look at this tool and um, decide that you're doing a perfect job and that's still time well spent but if you decide that you can maybe do with some help um, it's an option to um, click with someone to to contact you but please be aware that if you put information into this um, site, we won't contact you unless you ask us to do so. So you can put it in, update it next week, and it, it's very useful. Otherwise, we have um, three main services. So Brewing Portfolio Service, that starts from £500. It's a perfect way to start savings, start a savings habit. You can um, pay into their monthly as well. I use this for my son's junior ISA pay in, in monthly two it's quick and simple to set up and to follow secondly is wealth pilot which is partly based on the tool that i showed you um, you can um, have access again to a ready-made investment solution and my colleagues in the wealth pilot team are there to answer straightforward um, financial planning questions often we get asked about whether we should be consolidating pensions and on the far right hand side is where you'll find myself and the two poles and uh, we work alongside financial planners in many cases looking at clients with more complex needs you might be looking at inheritance tax in this case all the portfolios are bespoke. so i'm going to skip now um this is to the uh two qr codes and if you could scan um the first qr code give some feedback that'd be brilliant on the right hand side you can um, scan that QR code if you'd like to arrange a personal appointment there's no charge for these and we can have a look at your where you're at and where you'd like to go get to and, and how we can help you and finally this, this disclaimer um, page which we have to show and I'll just I'll just rest here now